We have a couple of great news stories to get to today. Um, we'll just dive right in. So DJI in the news again, the Matrice 300 touted as this, as one article put it, the coolest drone, which you will never get to fly. Um, <laughs> this is basically made for um, inspections, installing installations like power lines, railroad tracks. Um, some of the specs has four rotors. It can fly for up to 55 minutes on a single battery charge. The range is a lot longer. Um, it can actually send footage up to 15 kilometers back and actually and stream that footage. So um, pretty excited to see a big announcement, especially after the Mavic 2. No, the Mavic 2. Um, Any so initial thoughts? I had to say something um, when you sent the link to that article. As a writer, I thought... That is the most clickbaity title I've ever seen. <laughs> but it really, yeah, it's out of the price range for um, hobbyists, obviously. But if someone's running a serious drone services business, then no, it's going to be an investment. And if they have the right connections um, to fulfill those kind of orders, then yeah, they're going to fly it. But anyway, I just I had to laugh at that title sure. because writers we try to avoid that. But um, anyway. <laughs> Marketers yeah. don't. <laughs> um, you know, I my kind of response to that is, uh, you know, hopefully it's not never. Uh, hopefully I will be able to uh, to fly it at some point. But um, I kind of echo what what Kara's saying. I think it's um, it's impressive that in this uh, in this climate that we're still getting um, new hardware and and more capable mm -hmm. hardware and. Um, you know, I think it's um, it's very clearly a, a really uh, a real enterprise type of uh, type of aircraft and, and airframe. And, and, you know, sure, it's it's overkill for uh, for hobbyists. But, um, you know, Kitty Hawk has has a lot of customers that are doing uh, very kind of mission critical uh, type of uh, type of work. And, and this is something that will help them uh, do their job. So I'm uh, I'm curious to see it out in the wild and, uh, you know, before too long. You know, uh, I was excited when I saw this because we were talking, I think about a month ago, like uh, about, you know, whether or not DJI's innovation kind of, uh, you know, uh, seg um, period is over. And uh, it seems like they really came to market with some thoughtful products and that they had been kind of baking these for a while. Um I do kind of look at this thing almost as like the trash can Mac Pro. Do you remember that that device? That was it, it was basically a PC that not a lot of people would buy, uh, but it had everything and it was kind of overkill. Um, I'm curious to see how many enterprise users actually adopt this, uh, whether or not it will be the public safety segment that adopts it first, because uh, it kind of seems like it would be. Uh, really cool uh, or tailored for that type of use. And just also, you know, working with enterprise clients, are they still the majority of them tow and water scaling up their programs uh, or are they going to be at the level in the next year or so where they're buying, you know, more than a dozen of these per program? And that's probably going to be on the low end to get started, right? So this is just to show that I think that DJI is still innovating and they could still kind of be uh, leading the technology um, rather than thinking in volume. Any disagreements on that or am I being? No, I, I think it's a really fantastic iterative product. Um, I think your analogy to the, to the trash can Mac is, is a good one. Um, you know, I read the specs on this and, and there's a lot of, a lot of impressive hardware on it um, that they're not really recreating the wheel, but putting it all in one aircraft and, and one airframe is, is definitely impressive. And, and I agree with what you're saying that, uh, you know, you may be seeing kind of people dip their toe in the water and see kind of how much more capable this is than, uh, than previous hardware. But, um, I could also see some, some drone programs that, um, that are doing, um, you know, utilities and, and, um, kind of heavier infrastructure, they, they might go out and, uh, depending on the sophistication of the drone program, they might go out and get a, get a whole bunch of these. Uh, it definitely hit the cool factor for me, uh, you know, like just kind of pouring over the chips and flips um, oh, yeah. on it. Uh, it's like, how many things can we stack into one box, you know, type of deal. The nature of that kind of work, the closer they can get to an hour long battery life as well. Mm. Right. The battery life. That was really impressive to see, um, especially for more, more sophisticated operations and 
um, you know, BV loss operations, uh, a 55 minute battery time is seriously impressive. And I think unlocks a lot of, uh, a lot of operations that, uh, that you just can't do with a, a 25 minute battery life. Yeah. And then, you know, battery life has been the battle for, for forever, but you know, how much further can you get with it? Like another 45 minutes. And then you, you start getting into piloting fatigue and, you start getting into different territory. We really need to talk about fully automated systems anyway. So if, if DJI keeps pushing the boundary, if other drone manufacturers uh, look at this as like an opportunity to kind of push forward themselves, you know, we'll be reaching that that upper limit probably within the next two years. And, you know, that, that's been kind of one of the dreams since uh, I got started in this industry six years ago now. Right, because battery capacity has been such a limiting factor all across the board. Right, and it's got to be a limiting factor selling to enterprise, right? Just the uh, you know, oh, these little kind of toy operations, thirty minutes. You know, we'll just use the helicopter. Um, yeah. Right, but suddenly once you have something that that can fly long distances, you know, fifteen kilometers, stay up for an hour, um, and requires you know a real professional to um, to be operating it. Um, it's just a different kind of approach uh, to be considering adding that uh, to your operation. Yeah, absolutely. Also on this drone, they have, um, it's called dual pilot mode. So they like it to basically a driver going through driver's ed where um, an instructor can sit there and have, you know, they can take over the steering. Um, is this common in a lot of these enterprise drones? And how, how important do you guys think this is to, for both training and just for, for safety precautions? I think it started with the Inspire 2 and they um, named it Master Slave. So there's the master remote. And mm -hmm. I think what I um, saw in the article too is, and I think this has always been the setup with the um, if, if someone loses connection, then the other person can take over and continue to fly the drone. I think that's the most important safety feature um, besides possibly training someone, working with someone who might find themselves in a precarious situation and not have the experience. I mean, I've, flown near tall buildings myself and thought, oh no, um, so, you know, sometimes you get moments of panic. So this is um, a great feature, especially when you think of all the money you have up there in the sky. I mean, this is not a cheap drone. This isn't something inconsequential where, you know, if you uh, crash a Mavic Air 2, you know, you're out 800 bucks, but something like this, if there's damage, then um, that's a lot more substantial. So. Um, but I, as I remember, as I recall, it started with the, not even Inspire 2, I'm sorry, the Inspire series of drones, I believe. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, though. That sounds right. Uh, that, that, that's actually a really great, um, you know, <laughs> protecting uh, y yourself from, um, you know, losing the drone. That's a lot, you know, it's a big infi financial investment, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it, when I heard it, though, I was thinking training purposes, which is another thing that we're we're looking at. If we're trying to scale enterprise operations, we got to get past uh, like our PC master race phase of the drone industry, where it's only the drone nerd who, um, you know, the person who's piloting the program in the first place and sold it to his boss, who's doing the flights, uh, and anything that kind of helps that transition for getting more people uh, into your drone program, I think is helpful too. So it's covering it on, on both fronts. That's a really interesting feature. Yeah, the training aspect of it is is really interesting because you know there's just a there's a gulf between someone who just goes out and um, you know has their Mavic and their Part 107 uh, versus someone who can really operate something in um, in a very kind of sophisticated enterprise uh, setting. And so the the training aspect of of getting people up to speed and and being able to operate uh, a platform like that. Um, is really important. I think the safety aspect is um, is also really important. But I think the other really important part of uh, of the platform is that um, because you have two pilots, um, you know, one can be um, doing things that are more. Uh, someone can be utilizing the sensors um, mm -hmm. on that at the same time as someone who's flying. So if you're right. doing something with with thermal or with um, you know another type of of sensor that um, an aircraft such as this can uh, can hold. Um, you're really expanding your capabilities um, when you have that type of two uh, two operator setup. Right. 
Right. As there's more technology, more cameras, sensors on board, it's going to take more time to use them all and to get the data they're trying to get. Somebody has to be focused on flying it and making sure you're getting near the objects you're inspecting and so forth. So we got drone co-pilots now is what we're saying. Yeah. 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 <laughs>